What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2011 Porsche 911 S. Today on the 911 behind me, we're going to be covering how to do a coolant flush using our genuine Porsche coolant. We also recommend you get some distilled water so you can dilute this as this is fully concentrated. One gallon will make you two gallons for a gallon of distilled water. We typically recommend you do this every 40 to 60,000 miles or every four to five years, whichever one comes first. This car is at its 64,000 mile mark, so it's definitely due for a coolant flush. This job is gonna be applicable to both your 996 and 997 models as well, as they're pretty much identical when it comes down to the coolant system setup. But before we get started on this job, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna to need for this DIY. Tools, for this job, we're gonna need a couple basic tools, starting with a torque wrench, so we can torque down our drain plugs for the coolant system, a 3 8 ratchet, quarter wrench will work just as well. We have a small pick, a small flathead screwdriver, which is always nice to have, a six millimeter hex, and a T25, that's gonna come in handy to get all the hardware off our belly pan up front. Also very handy and very necessary when doing any cooling job on a 911 is a vacuum bleeder. We're using an Airlift 2 today, and this is gonna work alongside a compressor, which is obviously not pictured here, but definitely gonna be needed for this job, as well as some sort of catch pan to catch your old coolant. Now we know what kind of tools we're working with, let's get started on this DIY. All right, to get started, we're gonna start by removing our expansion tank cap. That way, as we break free our bleeder screws, we can go ahead and let the system flow out gently. You obviously wanna make sure this is stone cold before you do this. If you're not sure, you can always release your valve up top to release any pressure. I'm gonna set that off. So what you have up here is your pressure relief valve and sometimes you can use this if you're bleeding the car or trying to burp the system. And the way you use it is you lift it up. And then that'll allow just enough of the pressure buildup to get out should you try to burp the cooling system or get air out of it. Otherwise, you always wanna make sure it's flipped down and closed. Now let's go ahead and get the car up in the air and start draining some coolant out. All right, my good people. Next, we're gonna work on draining our coolant from the block, starting by removing the drain plug underneath the thermostat. You're gonna need a six millimeter hex. I'm using a six millimeter hex on a 3 8 ratchet. Break that free. Do the rest by hand. Just like when you do an oil change, you can always push up on the drain plug while you unthread it, so that way you have a chance of pulling it out quickly so you don't get covered in coolant or oil. All right, my good people, at this point, this side is basically coming down to a small dribble. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you up top with me while we're working on this and have the strain plug open. And you can either use compressed air or a shop vac, whatever you have available to you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow some air through the expansion tank to help push some of the coolant through that may be still stuck in here. And the reason for that is because you want the system as empty as possible. When you use a vacuum filled tool, it's gonna to suck up all the air out of the system. And if it's sucking up coolant as well, you're gonna get a bit of a mess up top. So we're gonna push as much out and you'll see me do this throughout the whole job, starting with this drain plug. I'll do the same thing once we get to the, therm to the uh, neck here by the water pump. And then once we disconnect our radiators up front, you're gonna see the same thing again. So if you see me climbing up top, that's what we're doing. Again, a shop air, or compressed air will do just fine. We have shop air here today, so let's get to it. All right, so again, what I'm doing is we have the tank here. I have my shop air. I'm gonna put the nozzle in, cover the rest with a towel. And you should be able to see some coolant down there. So that should do us for now. We're gonna reinstall our drain plug on the thermostat side and do the same thing next to the water pump neck. At this point, we can go ahead and reinstall our drain plug. I'm gonna get rid of the old crush washer we have a new one for this, which that will also be linked in the description below. You always want to replace the crush washers when you do this job, just like an oil drain plug. It'll leak if you don't replace it. And we're just gonna snug it up by hand with the 3 8 ratchet. And then we're gonna snug it up to 30 Newton meters. You can see it's not a lot. You don't have to gorilla it on. Just be gentle with it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and repeat the exact same process on this end, same thing with the air and everything. And just like we did on the thermostat side, we're gonna go ahead and remove our drain plug over here as well. 
and hit the tank with some compressed air. Again, this is a six millimeter hex. With that done, we can go ahead and reinstall our drain plug. Again, new crush washer. Now that we have the rear of the car drained, we're gonna go ahead and work on removing our belly pans down here so we can disconnect our radiator hoses and drain it even further. So, T25, you have a couple pieces of hardware all around. Let's get those off. Then we have two 10 millimeter nuts to remove that hold our aluminum pipes in place. All right, let's get our catch pan and work on releasing these two connections. I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver to pry up on this clip. You can fully remove it if you want or set it back like that. Then depending on how long it has been since this has been off last or if it's ever been off, the O-ring in here might be pretty glued to the uh, rubber section of this, so you might have to fight it a little bit. Just be prepared for a mess. All right, at this point, I'm gonna head back up top to my expansion tank, and just like I did before, I'm gonna blow some air through the system so we can get as much of the coolant out from the pipes as possible. With this emptied out as much as possible, we're gonna go ahead and reconnect everything. However, if you can, I would recommend replacing this O-ring. We'll leave a link in the description for that part number as well, as it's not part of our kits, but it is something I would recommend you replace. This one's original to the car. I'm sure it's been off in the past, so it'd be a smart move to replace it. The new O-ring on, it's gonna be a little bit of a tighter fit than it was when you took it apart. So you wanna make sure you get it a little bit lubricated with the existing coolant, and then you're just gonna have to massage it back into place so that you can put your metal clip back on. We're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. Once we do both of those, we'll put our 10 millimeter bolts back in just so we don't forget them later. All right, with everything buttoned up now, the next thing to do is bleed and fill our coolant system. So to do that, we're gonna do two things. One, we have a 10 millimeter nut that holds this tank in place. The reason I'm gonna undo that is to get the tank out a little bit for the specific bleeder that we're using. I need all the room I can to work with, so let me do that first. There's different kinds of bleeders out there, vacuum bleeders. This is the one we have in the shop today. While it doesn't have the best room to work in with in here, it does do the job. You wanna hook this up to your airline. Make sure your valve is closed on the tool. And then to make sure you have a good seal on here, what you can do is you can start pressing on the silver button here to start creating a suction. So far it seems to be holding. So what I'm gonna do is, in case we pull up any coolant from the system that may have remained, I'm gonna wrap this towel just around the nozzle here where the air exits, just to keep overspray down to a minimum. You wanna get it as close as possible to 25 on the gauge. We're gonna let it sit for a minute, make sure it doesn't drop. If it starts dropping, that means we have a leak somewhere. But if it holds, and that means our system is tight, then we can show you how to prime the line with coolant and then fill the system up. It's been about a minute or two. Our system's holding. I got it as close to 25 as possible. To the left of me, you'll see I have a big blue bucket. I have two gallons of concentrated genuine Porsche coolant in there, as well as two gallons of distilled water, giving me a perfect 50-50 blend. I'll go ahead and stir it up. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure this end of the fill tube is always at the very bottom of the bucket. The second you suck air in, the whole thing is obsolete. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep one hand on that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my valve up here and I'm just gonna get, let the whole line fill up with coolant and then shut it off as soon as that happens. All right, now even though that wasn't a lot, there's still some air that got back in the system with just that little bit of space in between the lines. So for a second or two. We're just gonna evacuate it. And now comes the fun part. I'm gonna hold the end of my hose in my bucket with one hand, release the valve with the other, and just let the system do its thing until it's completely full. All right, my good people, at this point, the system's pretty much stopped consuming coolant. You see we had to add a little bit more distilled water at the end and a little bit more coolant. It's not gonna hurt it. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna disconnect the vacuum bleeder from the airline. And then I should be able to just open up the valve and pull up on this tool. Beautiful. And from there, right now, it is currently at the minimum on the tank. Once we run it a little bit, we'll have this bleeder valve open, as mentioned earlier, just to help burp any little bit of cavities that may be trapped with air in there still. 
So we'll put our cap back on in the meantime, slide our tank all the way back in, put our 10 millimeter nut back. And there you have it, my good people, another DIY in the books. Overall, not a bad job on the coolant flush. Working on the lift definitely helps. However, if you're doing this on the driveway or in the garage, just make sure you're being safe. You have a jack stand and a couple floor jacks to support everything. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave them in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.